Hello friends, I'm Christopher and today I'm going to plant a small current and explain to you how it's going to become very huge in just three years like this gooseberry of mine. This is a moment that I started contemplating more than 1,000 days ago. And it started with this gooseberry bush. Before I actually get to planting the current, let me just tell you a little gardening story because I have had so much fun planning this space since we moved in in 2013 that I've got a lot on my mind. I'm gonna offload it here to my friends on YouTube. So this garden started off very small and it underwent, let's say, three large expansions outward to be the 36 by 36 square that it is. 2015, the garden wasn't even to the level where this goose bush right, gooseberry bush right behind me is. It was, it ended where the rhubarb is, which you can see just behind it. 2016, I brought it out, I doubled the space, so it was about 24 by 36. And then 2017, I added another 12 feet forward. But in 2016, I got a gooseberry bush and I got a blueberry bush. The blueberry bush did not survive. It needed uh, much better soil management than I was giving it. It needs a lower pH, 4.5 or so. And I just, I wasn't taking care of it. I got maybe a dozen blueberries and then it just didn't survive the winter. I, I was a bad gardener, but the gooseberry survived. And in 2017, it grew. And in 2018, it was pretty much this size and it we had our first fruit crop so three full years in all of 2016 all of 2017 and then in 2018 uh, we had fruit and it's the same thing this year it's even bigger and it's it's we've got flowers on it right now and I know we're gonna have a huge gooseberry bloom very very exciting how does that relate to currants well they're both ribes they're in the same family and I didn't know currants existed. I didn't know they were a thing until 2008 when I was an international student in Germany. And um, actually I got to meet some relatives of mine and they had a currant bush and they made a delicious cake and it had these red berries in it. I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck are these? And I found out they were currants. So fast forward, you know, I thought, oh, this is a cool Germany thing. Tell friends about it, blah, blah, blah. Got married found out my wife knows what currants are and she thinks they're amazing. So we knew we wanted to plant a current. In fact, currants were a contender for what we might have planted first. But I don't know, something about gooseberries, which I also discovered when I was an international student, just stuck out to me and I'm like, I have to have this first. Really, there are very, very few people in my area that grow these kind of things. They're a, they're a novelty. You don't even see them at farmer's markets, currants and gooseberries. So I kind of felt like a cowboy in the Wild West, you know, in this uncharted territory. But I had great resources from my UW extension, and there was a really nice growing guide for gooseberries and currants. So, 2016, we almost bought one late season, but then we didn't. And then 2017, when I expanded it to this size, I thought, oh, I should do it now. But I didn't. Instead, I. I planted the raspberry hedge. 2018, it's like, oh, I should do it now. But I did all the raised beds. So now it's 2019 and I've got a lot of very established things and the time is right to plant the current. In fact, it's going to go right here in front of me and I'm going to do exactly what I did with the gooseberry because you can consider them almost the same plant. They're in the same family. So. This is my very simple method for planting currants. You can use the exact same method for gooseberries, should you like, and you'll get a wonderful result by the time they're mature. First off, I ordered my gooseberry and my currants from Stark Brothers Nursery, and when they come, they've got um, their wrapped newspaper that's moist. Take them out when the temperatures, you know, uh, relatively in the, reliably in the 50s and above. I soak the roots in water for probably four or five hours. Uh, they really do dry up quickly, so they soak up a lot of water. Get them soaked. Uh, then you gotta pick your plot of land. They are quite hardy and very cold tolerant, which is why we're growing them here in USDA Cold Hardiness Zone 5A, Wisconsin, United States. Um, I'm going to dig a hole that's probably 15 inches in diameter, which is more than I need. 
I'm going to rough up all the soil and then simply put the roots in and slowly fill the dirt in all around it. Pack it down tight to make sure that there's no air pockets. Obviously you do that for any kind of good rooted plant that you're getting in as a bare root transplant. I personally keep mine level with the ground for where the roots stop, level with whatever my walking surface is. You can actually put them a little bit below the ground level, I've heard. I haven't tried that myself. I'm gonna plant at ground level. And then lastly, on top, I put some compost. Now there's, there's a debate for whether you wanna mix compost into the soil or not. I choose not to. And the reason why is the same reason they tell you not to for bare root trees. Because in this first year, it's all about root growth. And you want these roots, you want a nice tap root to go down and these roots to expand and find their nutrients and their water source. But if you've got this, you know, 15 inch diameter hole with compost and all the nutrients right there, the roots really don't have much encouragement to do anything except this. You know, they stay where they are. And that's not healthy for the long-term success of the plant. Same with the long-term success of a tree. Uh, but if you plant them in the soil and you put a little bit of compost on the top, that will eventually, as it rains and the seasons go on, slowly trickle down. And by that time, your roots are already established and they're heading out. That's pretty much it. Um, as far as the important parts of establishing a current. Um, if, now in my case, as you can see here, the, the plant itself came trimmed. If you were getting this from a friend or a different nursery that had long stems, you'd wanna trim it after an outward facing bud, you know, keep them maybe eight inches um, from the base up for the first year. And other than that, th that's all you do. And you'll see some greening up in the first year, as I know from the gooseberry, greening and a little bit of growth. And the second year is a lot of growth. And then the third year you'll see even more growth and you'll see fruit. That's what I'm expecting with this current too. So it's 2019 right now. I'm expecting my first harvest, fingers crossed, in 2021, but 2022 for sure. It's wonderfully exciting. If I can find any old footage, I'll show you the growth of the gooseberries. So here we can see the very first year when I put it in. You see how small it is, um, and you can see where it is relative to the rhubarb. That's pretty much your only reference point, and a little bit of the raspberries. Then 2017, look at how much it's grown. And now, 2008, or then the year after that was 2018, we had our first um, harvest and the first flowering, and it was so exciting. And then here we are now. So I guess you can think of it as four years, 2016, 17, 18, and 19 until now, but really it was three years until we had our first harvest. You know, I've got a chuckle. Seeing this current in the ground now reminds me of a comment that a friend made several years ago when we were planting our bare root trees and we had that, you know, nothingness of, of a, a gooseberry bush in there. The person said something along the lines of, oh yeah, your house is the one with a bunch of sticks planted in the yard. And uh, yeah, essentially that was, that was true. Just these, you know, the whips of the fruit trees, essentially not even a full meter tall, just looked like sticks in the yard. And that's what this current here feels like too. I mean, look at it now. It's, it's barely eight inches tall. In fact, if I didn't have a stake here, you could probably walk right over it and snap it over. So I'll be sure to stake it up before I leave tonight. It's just a special feeling. You know, having seen the success of the gooseberry, I can envision how successful this current is going to be. And I picture myself sitting right here, well, probably shifted over a little bit there, but essentially right here three years from now and seeing all these beautiful, um, bundles of red currants just ready to be harvested in the springtime and early summer. Really pretty wonderful. Well, thanks for joining me here today. I hope you learned something about ribes, currants, gooseberries, and if you're planning on planting any yourself, you're in for a wonderful experience. They are truly one of the favorite plants of mine in my garden, and now I have twice as many things to be excited about. 
What do you think I did right? What do you think I did wrong? What have you done differently when planting similar items in your garden? Be sure to leave a respectful comment below. There are a lot of ways to garden and we can all learn something. Thank you very much. Happy gardening. And until next time.